the inside function. Now, this is the piece that we have to we have to be absolutely clear on what it what we're asking. So let me ask it a different way. If I gave, if I told you that I um, x is equal to five, where would you start in this function? What's the first thing you would do? Take the natural log of five, right? So go by order of operations. What would you do first? Well, the first thing you would do is take the natural log. So we're going to identify then the natural log of x as the inside function. What's the second or the last thing you would do? Yeah, you would take that answer and you would cube it. Okay, so now if I let y, and we're going to say y equals h of x, and that's going to be our composite function, which is it? f of g of x or g of f of x? Because I want to take the natural log first, it has to go inside the out, you know, the f of x, so yeah, it would be f of g of x. Now that would be again the same thing as saying f of the natural log of x, since g of x is the same thing as the natural log of x, and if I put the natural log of x into x cubed, I would have natural log of x quantity cubed. Okay, so my composite function, think of it this way. What would I do first? If I knew an input value like 5, what's the first thing I would do? I would take the natural log. So the natural log is my inside function. Now that's all they're asking us to do on this problem, but we're not going to stop there. Let's go ahead and take the derivative. And we're going to go back and take the derivative of this. Oops, make sure I write it correctly. And I'm going to identify some things just a little bit different. Um, because my inside function is the natural log of x, I'm going to let u equal the natural log of x. And I'm going to let y equal u cubed. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to identify this. This is my inside function. This is my outside function. Now the chain rule says that we're going to chain together these derivatives. I forgot to tell you this. Back here. Remember I told you that the, the purists say that we, you know, these are notations only and we're, we can't really break them apart. But I went ahead and, and explained why, how dy, dx are really, it's really finding the slope along the tangent line. Now you have to be a little careful because we kind of switch gears a little bit. When I have du, I'm really looking at the differential of the input variable here. But up here, I'm looking at it as the differential of the output variable. But even the purists tell you to do this. Cancel the du's. Just like they're in a fraction, what do you have left? dy dx. Okay? So if you successfully chain these together, then you're going to end up, after you have canceled those terms, you're going to end up having exactly what you want, and that is, in this case, dy dx. The other thing I forgot to tell you is that, you know, even though the dy dx uh, a way of writing this is the same thing as writing f prime of gx and g prime of x and so forth, why do I show you both of these? It depends on the problem. There are some problems where this is actually easier to work with than trying to write it this way, and vice versa. Particularly, this, uh, the differential notation is going to be used a lot in Section 3.7, called the Related Rate Problem section. And so it's going to be a lot easier if we do this. So we have to be able to, we have to be flexible enough to use one of the two ways, and we decide which way we want to use it. So let's go back to ours. For this one, we're gonna, I'm going to show it to you in both ways. 
and then you'll have a chance to um, decide for yourself on some of the others. So if we look at this, and we, we have our function, y equals, and we say let u be the inside, you know, L, natural log of x is the inside, and y equals u cubed is the outside function, then the derivative I want to find is, and we have to go back and say, well, what is the, um, the right pen here, um, what is the output variable in this function? And it would be y. Okay, so this is dy and then d x because x is the input variable up there. So we want to find dy dx. But we're going to build this using our chain rule. When I look at this function, what derivative can I determine from here? d what? y u because u is the output variable. Okay, du d x because x is the input variable, okay? Now this is a derivative you don't know yet. I'm going to tell you what it is and then we're going to see it later on today yet. So the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 divided by x, okay? So just kind of store that away, we're going to come up with it later. Over here, what derivative can I find? Okay, the output variable is y, so dy, d, u, because u is the input. Now, this is one of those section 3.2 ones that you should know how to do now. Okay, we're not going to go back and look at steps on this. So the derivative of 3u is 3u squared. Okay, now, the derivative of dy dx, again remember how we create this, is dy du times du dx. Could you switch the order of these fractions? It's multiplication, sure you can. Multiplication is commutative so you can switch the order. Okay, so dy du well, dy du is over here. It's 3u squared. du dx, I told you that one. We haven't really looked at it formally yet. It's 1 divided by x. And that seems to be a, a pretty nice answer, except for one major problem. Scott, what do you think that problem is? Gonna be? Yeah, why can't I leave the, it as u? And the original had the input as x. Yeah. So you have to go back and make sure that the answer you give is it has, and again, the variable of uh, the input variable is represented down here, and the input variable is x. So you have to go back and put that in. Well, what was u? Let's go back up. u is the natural log of x squared times 1 divided by x, and you might want to just say it's the natural log of x squared divided by, oops, I had to put a 3 up there, divide by x. Okay. So that's looking at it using our differential notation. What happens if I use the other <coughs> notation? What I'm talking about is this down here, f of g of x and so forth. So let's just look at this simple problem in that format also. So now we're going to find the derivative. It's the very same thing. Only now I'm going to say y equals f of x, so we can kind of get into that function notation. And we have the natural log of x quantity cubed. <coughs> Using this notation, it's really no different than the other one. Um, I'm going to say f prime of x equals. What I need to do is to look at the, again, the input function and the output function. 
And again, one of the ways you can do this is to say, if I knew, if someone gave me a value for x, where would I start? And I would start by first determining, let's say x is 5, I'd first determine what's the natural log of 5. So that makes this the inside function. The outside function is that I'm going to square, I'm going to cube something. Now, again, this is one of those days that I just need to have a little bit of something out of the ordinary. Okay? So we're just going to blop that out with a bunch of smiley faces. Okay? So if I had, if I had something, if I had this thing cubed, what would be the derivative of that? Yeah. yeah, it's 3 something squared, and that something would have to be just the same thing I had behind the smiley faces, right? Okay, so that's, this is taking the derivative of the outside function. So I'm going to put it outside here so we don't lose track of it. Now, we know that behind all those smiley faces is an expression. So we're going to go back now and take a look at that and take those smiley faces away and actually write now what it, actually, what it is. And so what it actually is would be natural log of x. So what we're going to do is, you know, just black, block out, do something, and just say it's something. If you want to use my smiley face idea from now on, use it. But it's something cubed. How do I take the derivative of something cubed? Well, I take 3 times the something squared. Okay, now, what's missing? Well, hang on a minute, Sean. And you've kind of used up all of your, all your freebies today, so you have to kind of wait just a minute here. So now I have to take the derivative of the, yeah, the inside function, and that's going to be the ins right here. So now this is the derivative of my inside function. Okay, so what I end up with is 3 times the natural log of x, that quantity squared, times, and this is why this is the information you really haven't had yet, it's coming up, but it is 1 divided by x. Do I get the same answer as before? Yeah, I get the same answer. So either way you want to look at it, it's up to you. And I really don't care which of those methods you use as long as it comes out to be correct. Okay. So the composite function, the first thing is you've got to be able to see a, compo a composition of two functions. You've got to be able to identify what is the inside function and what is the outside function. Okay. We're going to just do some practicing today. Some of these are a little more complicated than others. You can, you've got to be aware now. You know, it's so easy if, we, if all I do is just give you the same thing over and over again and we practice the same thing. The hard thing is when you have to discern when to use what rule. So let's take a look at this. Just consider it. What other rule besides the chain rule do we have to use? John K. You, you. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I heard others say it though too. It is the product rule. Okay. So I'm going to put this in parentheses here just to kind of remind us we've got a product. We've got the factor X with then this other factor that happens to be cubed. So we're going to have to use the product rule. So if we build this derivative, and again, now here's your review for, uh, for the product rule. The product rule says we take the first factor times the derivative with respect to the input variable of the second factor. Okay, and the second factor is that binomial cubed plus the second factor times the derivative with respect to the input variable of the first factor. Remember, for me, and then there we have some problems in the web assign that have you do the same thing, you must show the derivatives. And for me, showing the derivatives is this line. If you haven't seen that in the video, go back and look at it. I'm very specific about that. It's so easy with the technology you have to press one button. And that doesn't tell me anything about what you have. Thank you.